Welcome back, guys. Uh, we regret to inform you we're about to go to another commercial break because no, nah, I'm kidding. We're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're going. We're going in. Um, Hooligan had lost some of his equipment, so we are now back, uh, ready, fully set up now. Um, and he's got all of his stuff set up. So yeah, we have to we'll play fully. Yeah, we have to trace where we called that one. And that 10 years was long. It was a long time, but now we're back. And we have L5 and RRR waiting for us. It's going to be, uh, seems to be, seems very likely we're going to have, <laughs> why? <laughs> why are you laughing? Nothing, nothing. Why? <laughs> Tell me why. Just when you said RRR, I just. <laughs> R. I don't know. It's funny because that, that team name is. Uh, it's just such a, a name that no matter how many times I hear it, I can't get used to it. Um, it's tough. It's <laughs> <laughs> and I when like I watch I, when I watch the vods and I see and we we mention the team name, I just always see the oh my dog in <laughs> like every time you say it, like I just imagine your face like being like ar ar ar. Yeah, we lost tough. it for a minute. It was it's been a long ten years. So it was, <laughs> yeah, we got old. We got like we got super old. And we still kept our, our youth, though. <laughs> yes, somehow. That's the power. That's the power of Heroes of the Storm. But on the left, on the blue side, it will be L5 with their changed roster. Wolf, get it together. All right. Let's go back to the game. I'm back. I'm back. We're in <laughs> here. Back. And of course, SD coming in with the new roster. I think he's placed himself pretty well. But the real question goes to Hooligan. The one who has to replace Noblesse. For now, he's been doing okay, but against the stronger teams last weekend we saw against the MVP Black, especially, he has been a big, big hole in this team. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot to improve on for Hooligan. SDE, on the other hand, I think has been doing a fine job replacing Nitrogen. Sure, he's not quite Nitrogen's level just yet, but he's definitely closing the gap very quickly. And I'm very hyped to see this player rise up to the top uh, you know, tier team in L5 because I think he was held back for a long time throughout his career. Mm -hmm. Jung Ah, of course, will be the key player listed here, playing a lot of melee assassins. Playing more tanky heroes, though, in recent times with the drafting we've been seeing from L5. He's playing back, you know, on the Arthas, the Tyrael, Dahaka for the Globals. So, definitely the favorites tonight. Even with all those holes we were talking about, we saw in Hooligans specifically, Noblesse considered to be the best tank in the world, even when. Uh, Europe dominated the midseason brawl. Many people were still saying, well, if you have to put one player as top tank, it's still probably Noble S, but he retired right afterwards. He's no longer a Heroes of the Storm pro gamer. Not right now. We've seen players come back. He might be one of them. Yep, and Rich came back just now, and he, on the other side, here comes the challenger, the lower part of the ladder right now, but they, after a very hard fought, loss against MVP Black. They looked very sad. They looked very disappointed after their plays. But today, maybe they have something in play. They only had less than 24 hours to work on, but maybe they can show some amazing what they prepared for us tonight. Yeah, we saw heavily uh, committed to the gray main pick for our, our mm -hmm. all tournament long. So Oduk bringing that out. We'll see if he can actually hit his strides with the hero today. It would be something that L5 may actually draft around as EGZ's weak hero pool often puts her on the Keltos even in situations where it doesn't really make sense. So playing a lot of Keltos this team, a lot of Grey main. So the holes for RRR are very prevalent in the draft and also in game, it just feels like when momentum is taken away from this team, they really, it, it knocks the wins out of their sails. Game one looks okay. Game two, a little bit rocky and then game three, it just doesn't feel like the team that we saw dominate in the open division. So I uh, I think for them getting the composure together because they've had so many 3-0s against them is something that's always a challenge, always difficult. But at least going into this first draft, they look to be at least in decent spirits here. Yeah, the key player was on MSG because he was playing nine different heroes in 13 games. That's a lot of heroes to play in nine in 13 games. And he's been... Filling the holes for the team most of the times, but oftentimes there were lots of aggression play, aggressive plays, especially with his green main at the very beginning of the match of phase number two. So after those were quite taken down, a little calmed down, I think they're filling in a little bit better. Well, Dragonshire is going to be banned here. It's been a big favorite for RRR. So we've already been seeing the Kalthos play out of EGZ there. That's where she's been running it most of the time. So that will be the ban. And then 
The ban for Warhead Junction will be the ban for RR, so a more common one. Not going to target anything specifically against L5 here. It's actually a, a map that they run more than other teams, but very rarely. Anyways. Ban on Warhead was from RRR and Inferno Shrine. We saw an awesome, games in an awesome game in Series number one. Going in again. Maybe this time as we're waiting for the players to come into the Nexus. Chogao. I want to see Chogao. That's the thing. Wolf, bring you it. You want to see it? I want to see it coming out from I want to see If I see it, I want to see an intelligent draft. I want to see yes. well-planned Chogao. I don't want right. to see the let's see what happens Chogal, or let, we just kind of threw it in there, which we've seen so many times throughout the second phase. We've seen, what, three Chogals? Maybe four? I know at least three, so. L5 will have first ban here. The map choice, Infernal Shrines, is the one of RRR, so could be the only game in this series if things go as predicted where they have the first ban. It will be on the Uther. Uther first man, and this most of the times, yes, the response from RR would has been Genji entire yesterday against Black, and also seems like they're going for to the same path tonight. Hundred percent ban rate today, Genji so far. We did not see any ninja action tonight, as Genji is balanced, and oftentimes when the stronger team picks, or even the even the weaker teams when they get hands on it, they get a full wipe, and Supports has been really, really rising up on top. Not just in Korea, it's just all regions, also in China too. So there's an Ariel first pick, and Illidan, Tassadar! <laughs> okay, I well, like these changes already. I feel like I've seen this draft before. <laughs> um, so this is interesting. So we'll see the prioritization of Illidan here for RR over the range DPS. They've really mostly been prioritizing at the top of their drafts. Grey main first pick, uh, and Anub was actually first picked against MVP Black. So first time we're going to see this uh, Illidan rotation out mm -hmm. of them actually banned uh, by them many times in the series yesterday. They banned it first ban twice. So they think the Illidan is the stronger pick right now on this patch. So they're going to go ahead and grab it this time. They didn't do it yesterday, but they will take the opportunity now. And L5 is drafting much like what we saw earlier from Mighty and also what we saw from them in the mid-season brawl where they were actually looking for these all-in volley comps. This is one way to soft deny that by taking the Tassadar away. It's gonna be Cassia though and not the volley here that L5 wants to pick. And even before the second band phase, Arthas making an appearance as a big counter to Illidan when he dives in. So want, the, want that root combo also with some CCs later on. They can bring, bring that in, and Cassia making lots of appearances exact, it, to counter Illidan with the blinds coming in with the fan for the verse damage later on. It's been quite effective oftentimes, but and the skill shots from L5 will be quite on point. Yeah, I mean, I like the Cassia a lot. The extra protection against the DPS is very massive. We saw that earlier when we saw Rich's Zeratul, he actually tweeted after the match. Funny as this, we wanted to hear what he had to say. He said the Q Zeratul build worked really well uh, against the Illidan comp in practice, mm -hmm. but he was disappointed with his results. Against the two support comp. Yeah. And of course, screams. Sometimes it works in screams, not in the actual match. And banning on Mar Martheo. Maybe they're trying to bring in very tanky ones from the start or. Oftentimes, I saw lots of banned cards from RRR because simply because they seemed like they did not have the confidence to actually use those heroes, especially the new ones like Genji and Martheo has been the constant ban, even though they had the chance to actually pick it for their side. I think that's one of the problems right now for RRR going into a lot of the draft against the stronger teams. Well, let's see what the ban's going to be here. Not an easy one. Uh, it's Tyrael and Uther that they're thinking about. They're going to take Tyrael away to stop that big, crazy combo. So Uther w is available. You have to assume that based on how RRR always drafts and how they've been playing since the old times and in their old team roster, even with EGZ and Kong, they are going to be looking for very likely the Li Ming fifth pick now. I thought they were going to take it here and leave the flexibility for the fifth pick, but looks like Li Ming is now going to be what they bring in as their last pick. 
they don't have too much CC. Actually, no CC available except for the hook on RRR. Maybe they'll bring in some CC and leave the solo Illidan all damage. They can still bring in Li Ming for the flexibility or even Tychus as they seem to be playing pretty often. Along with to burst down all the all the tanks in the front but line. I don't like the Tychus pick into the Cassia though. Every other thing that you say, I think I'm 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 agreeing yeah, with you right. there. But with the Cassia, I feel like you really, even though Tychus is not a horrible pick, you limit the value. So let's see what L5 is going to close this out with. It'll be the secondary support because they take Rhaegar over the Uther. It's going to be. Very likely that Uther coming in. Will they grab something for Global here? A solo Shriner, what would be the Tahaka? Something that they could grab with the Arthas, being that the main tank. And they're gonna deny Li Ming, take the Tahaka, and not run Cassia double support. It's just gonna be solo support Cassia. And now this Li Ming pick, which isn't normally that strong given the scenario, is very good against Illidan's evade. And it denies the pick away from EGZ, who's the hero we're looking for here. Who is she going to play? We could see her flex to the Tassadar, but that is just not how they uh, allocate their players to heroes. It's going to be the Tychus you mentioned, the only option left. But against the blind, not a big fan. Yeah, not a big fan, of course, after you mentioned. Also, Keltas was an option, but I think it was a very threat. The Haka coming on from the other other side of the bush could have been a big threat. So there's a Tychus pick for the Odin. I think it's a solid pick too. Well, here we go, guys. This is going to be game number one. RRR bringing in the Stitches pick here. No follow-up roots with that, though. And L5 not going all in on the Cassia. Have the leaming for the backup. Have the extra lane pressure of the Dahaka as we go into game number one here on Infernal Shrines. In blue, L5, Hooligan on Arthas, SC on Cassia, Jungle on Tahaka, STE on Li Ming, and Soy on Ariel. In red, RRR, ODOC on Tychus, MSG on Stitches, EZZ on Tassadar, Kong on Illidan. Take a look on Rhaegar. So EZZ actually will be on the Tassadar. Not a common hero for her to play. I haven't caught all the VODs of yesterday, so I don't know if it is, that has it is, changed. It is the first one of phase number two, and I think yep, it is right. the very first one on competitive, even in open division. I've never seen her being on Tastar. Most oftentimes, uh, Li Ming, Kalthas, or even Tychus. So there's some kind of role swap from their side, which I think it works okay, since Odok was off the damage. Well, as you can see here, the sustain coming out for L5 allows him to dive in and make this a, a good trade. <laughs> so, okay, well, we're both going to do damage to each other a lot, but then I'm going to press W, and everyone's going to get healed. <laughs> so, wait, pretty aggressive here. Luckily, no CCs to punish him for that. But with Tehaka coming in, even Illidan has to be careful diving in. I think they will be lacking the spell damage somewhat against the Illidan, but it's all up to leaving, and with the root potential of Arthas, and Tehaka can also be in the back line with them. Threatening Illidan whenever he comes in with the Dark Swarm. I think it's a very balanced comp against RRR. Yeah, that's what I think comes where the strength of the comp comes uh, for L5 is its balance. It's not all in on anything. It has so a solid two types of DPS. The Cassia against the Tychus, where as long as she's moving, she's not going to take much damage. Her blind, so powerful against the auto attackers. So powerful against Illidan as well with the blind, so... RR's damage is really weak. And I feel like this has to be Archon if they want to make this comp work. And then when any team fights, picks are possible as well with the stitches, but no follow up roots. It's going to be the totem. Okay. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna, I look at the stitches picking and I go, I could see why you guys picked it early, but with nothing to follow up with it, maybe they were thinking about grabbing the Kael'thas, like you mentioned, decided to go into the Tychus instead. The Kael'thas would at least have given them a follow up route. But it's only. The Rhaegar and the 
Illidan. No Tyrael. Carrying with the Zeratul is also, or sorry, with the uh, Illidan is also going to be a little more difficult. Yeah, also Death Star is building into the auto attack, so providing extra damage uh, with the Archon, I think it's more likely now. Yeah, I think with so. With his talents. It's not a whole lot of crazy mobility on the side of L5. They have Li Ming, but otherwise, you know, the Force Wall can do some serious work, but I think the trade off is too high. Don gets caught here, but again, no follow up. Howling Blast is going to be the follow up, but it's for L5 as they are just out sustaining RR like crazy. Focus is on SCSC. Kong does make a dive in, but for what? Does not get the kill, does not get the sustain from the back line since his entire team has to back off. That's the A AoE sustain we've been seeing a lot throughout tonight's matches. And I mean, it shows why, why this Oriole pick is so strong right now. There's it feels like the reason why Ariel got so strong is because the supports have become important. Double support is a thing, but also because finally Korea figured out that Cassia is a good Ariel battery. It took a while for people to realize this, but it became more and more popular. And how in this meta of Illidan being so dominant, the Tychus being dominant, these auto attack heroes being at the top of the list for DPS, having that extra blind and having the extra trait Damage reduction against auto attacks is very powerful. So Cassia's rising up as a result, working here with the Ariel. It used to be that you had to play the Vala with the Ariel or you weren't picking it, or maybe there was some, you had some weird niche uh, Gul'dan pick, but now there's another really strong battery here in the Cassia that happens to counter the Illidan. So the draft of L5 balanced around that with the Leeming to kind of be the cherry on top. Yep, and MSG looking for Diaka joins in the team fight, and they are separated, and Rekar will find himself in nowhere as they're making this approach. What an invade coming out from L5. Kong has been taking some minions off, but it's not really helping them as they lost the camp, lost Regar. That's a bigger move. Of course, not really... No pair up with the CC, and also CC to actually stop anyone from diving in from L5 side. It's really costing them big, and until the late game, it will cost them big. Having no CC in this meta where dive is a very big thing. I think they're... Their hero pool and the style of drafting, it's not really making its perfection perfection in this meta right now. Yeah, it's just not... It's not it just doesn't make uh, a theme, right? That's always look for in a draft is, what's the idea with this draft? Or what was the idea, but didn't end up happening because they got outdrafted. But in this case, it feels like they just thought these heroes are the best. They want to put them together. Kong taking a ton of damage, gets a tame and struck as well here. Hooligan, look at the peel coming out. We worried about him going into L5, Ooh. but this is a great engage by him. So much peel, the roots there. And STE just cleans them up, man. And hooking on Arthas. <laughs> I think Stitches, okay, now that I think of it, it's a extra protection for the team. It's for the helping hand. Make sure that Kong can escape. If he cannot, there is an extra hook. So he can escape. I think that's the way. I'm just trying to think of a way. You're really trying to force it. No one takes g Club seriously right now. Um, please. <laughs> but really, without any CCs available to them, I think Stitch is, is just the steal away from the L5 right now and really not making a big play. Here we go, the grab onto Hooligan. Level What's 10 more? is around the corner here. RR needs to consider backing out immediately. There's the 10. What are we going to see here? Disintegrate coming out. It could have maybe tried to engage with Cindergrosso, but that would have been pretty all in. Just going to back away uh, and take the rat last of the defenders. RR can't do anything at this stage. Holding the Cindergosa actually, though, is Hooligan. Nope. Rip. Will be isolation coming out. Whenever there is a dive, it's a very good counter. Yeah, so Illidan, you wanted to come in, but uh, now you regret it. And oftentimes, you will be getting into lots of damage with the Lightning Ball, and the sustain from Arthas will be crazy now. And this is oh great. There's a helping hand, but not in the, not at the perfect timing already. So much damage put out. And three level, two levels ahead, and L5 seems to be having the game of their life. Going to be a little bit easier, as we expected. But this draft from RR looks kind of lost from the beginning of beginning of the series right now. Yeah, I mean, from the beginning of the draft, you knew that L5 had the better answers, and now they're just showing why, uh, proving you know our assessment was correct. I'm sure L5 is the higher skill team, the higher mechanic team.
uh, for team fighting and rotations, decision making, things like this, but it's compounded by the fact they have the better draft. Illidan is doing a lot of work for split soak. Okay, here's Ooh, that's a, here's a good a pick. pick. That's a nice hook with the wall. I think Hooligan will go down for sure, but. He goes down for sure, but. That was a long time, though. The hook was blind. That was well done, knowing that there was a high chance that someone would be positioned there. Got the target they didn't want, but still good. Now SC is going to be collapsed upon here. They have Aegis. They will use it here. Yaka comes from the side and gets tons of damage and turns around everything. There's the AoE healing coming out on the CSC. Does not even fight. Oh, kill. And will we get the tongue grab? Yep. It's That's going to be the wipe. Full five-man wipe Ouch. with only four members, by the way. Uh, if you if you take a quick look on the main map, you'll remember Arthas was killed. Yes. It wasn't it's not fair to say 4v5 because uh, Li Ming gets resets and so has more abilities than anyone would have at this moment in time, but I, I mean, I try to look for, good, for positives here, but you know, I'm not giving very many options. The hook was good, but it wasn't enough to save them. They decided to take a fight that was haphazard. I, I have to give Kong credit for at least trying to keep them even on talent tiers. They're not right now, but he got them to 10. He's been split soaking a lot with the Illidan. That's kind of what Illidan does, though. It's not like I could be impressed by the fact that he's split soaking. At least he's making the right decisions with that. They save the fort for the time being, but this cap will eventually push it in. As right now, if you look at the minimap, L5 is painting this map blue. The only caps uh, not taken by them will be the red side uh, bruiser cap and the neutral cap to the bot, which L5 was probably going to take, but now the shrine's up, he'll let it go. I think they, because they got a pick on to Arthas, they got a little excited, and it was, I believe, right before L5 got 13. So thought that was their timing to go in with the 5v4, but their focus lacked the damage a little bit. We were thinking of Archon for extra damage. It was actually wall, so I think that could have been the mistake. I mean, I, I definitely would have preferred the Archon here. I guess the Ar the Archon, or sorry, not the Archon, the uh, wall here <clears throat> is the idea of, well, maybe it's another follow-up for when we get a Stitches hook, but they only got the one pick from the hook. Barely got it at that on a blind hook. The wall not really being significant in that case, so. The composition for RR just has problems. It just really does, and you can't change that in the middle of the game. They have to work with the cards that they dealt themselves here. The Tasta comes all the way down and notices the Haka is missing and wasting a lot of the time just roaming around the map since they cannot win this shrine fight at all. Taka's just going to look for some extra split, so he's waiting for a potential brush stock as well. This is a, a nice move by RRR to actually take this camp. EDD looking for the escort here for just a second, but we'll go home. Unfortunately, messed up the hearth, was interrupted there by the minions. And this Punisher gets the free top uh, fort because the RRR is not willing to. Three levels down, well, two in a second. Levels down, a talent tier down for most of this time. Willing to contest that fort. They will contest the keep wall, of course. And that's going to be all they have the extra split pressure there of the Illidan in the bot lane or the camp the Illidan cleared. Illidan is making his way up. There's the hunt used onto, onto the perfect target. The CSC is getting chunked down with all the damage, but Kong, Li Ming's damage is real. Disintegrate does not finish, and Ancestral does not connect in time. That Ancestral was five years too late. <laughs> that was... He, I don't even. I can't believe we even saw the casting animation on that one. He does he have it available. Saw the green. He has it available now, but I don't know if the game is going to go on long enough for him to respawn and use it. Oduk goes down, and EGD is the last one alive. She will survive to get into that hall of storms, but L5 just walks away a keep up now. And even though Illidan took the bot uh, camp down there, Kong actually was able to clear that. That's getting some extra pressure. It's insignificant comparatively, and it needed more time to actually gain value. L5 can just grab this free EXP from the port. Four levels, about to be a, a clear four levels. We never really see four levels. We see like, okay, the 3.6 levels up and they're technically four levels up. This is almost there. Like, they're almost directly four levels ahead. At this yeah, stage. with this camp, and if they clear the camp at the bottom, if Hyaka makes that secret push once more, that stealthy push, I think RRR will be in great danger. They will lose both of their remaining keeps, and that may just be the end of the game as we see it here. And also, the next Punisher Shrine should be coming out soon. Uh, I'd say soon might be a bit of an overstatement, but it will be up eventually. There's just not that much of anything that RR could do. There's no objectives on the map, so 
L5 is just clearing lanes, clearing minion waves, pushing the lanes out, putting that additional pressure on. Dahaka's going to the top lane to prep for the catapults coming in. And RR's just kind of sitting back, trying to soak EXP, but there's nothing else they can do. I don't want to say this game was lost in draft, but they started the game with a massive disadvantage. This There's a great hook on to Swoy, but protects himself for the perfect time. The hunt is cancelled too. The Aegis is so good here, and Rhaegar is taken out. He's the first one to fall. And this is just going to be total domination. Howling Blast over the wall for the triple grab there. And they're trying to, to get the hook here on the MSG. It is successful. Disintegrate going to get another reset here for SDE. And I mean, this is just salt in the wounds now. Swoy is saying not even a chance. Even if you hook me and try to hunt with the CC, there's ages, and it seems to be that's the only CC, uh, only protection available, and that's enough for them because there are there is just no CC available for RRR right now. They just the, the, the stitches pick doesn't pair with anything, mm -hmm. and so that's a problem. It means that when the hook comes in, even before Aegis, there's just nothing that comes with that. When you look at the Tychus pick, can't do anything to SCU, gets in his face, does massive damage, blinds come down, Ilden, same story. The CC is on the side of L5 for real. We're seeing the roots come in from the Arthas. We're seeing the detainment strikes hit. And so Kong, all he's been able to accomplish this game is split push. Guarantee if we pull the tab screen up, he's leading in EXP, he's leading in siege damage, but it doesn't necessarily matter. As look at what L5 is doing. They're securing the caps before they get the last defender. They're hoping that this Punisher will end the game, and there's a very good chance that it will. Still four levels ahead, 14 minutes in, 16 kills to one. RRR is thinking about the draft for game number two. That they should be, and this is the last chance. I think they hit 16 just now, as Stitch is getting chunked down with the Ancestral connecting this time. But CSC does get <laughs> Aegis 2, and Kong is looking for targets, but he's the one taken down from the beginning. Taika is also rooted, and th there's a double. SCE is looking for more with the teleport, and seems to be this is going to be a full team wipe, and Taika is looking for his life on the minimap as SC, we see. SC at, what, 20% health attacks the Taika with 80, because he just doesn't care about the Taika oh, pig. And Jung is going to take him out here. That's going to be the wipe. 21 kills to one. Nearly the perfect game. RR was able to get the one pick onto Arthas in the early game. Four level lead all game long. 20 kill lead. And this is going to be the one, the, one of the most one sided heroes games we've ever cast. And RR, like I said, already thinking about game number two, how they're going to alter their draft. But that was a nasty one. Archon. Win rate 100%. That's yeah. the way. I love it. That's how you do leaming, Archon, when so, you have the upper hand. So for RRR here, I mean, we talk about confidence being an issue for this team and getting destroyed like that in game number one, definitely not going to do any favors for that weakness, you could say. Uh, I want to be the nice guy, you know. I feel like you're being, I'm being the bad cop, you're being the good cop in this one, but... Uh, in this movie, RRR dies, and it's a sad story. It's a sad story. It's not over yet. It's still going on, but as you guys are watching with popcorn, I'm pretty sure you guys already know the ending to the story, but it's a matter of how much improvement, I think that's the that's the point, how much improvement that we can see during the draft and also in-game, how much they can actually follow the macro, the big macro picture L5 still has, even with the roster change, I think their macro is super good. That's how they were able to have the reverse sweep against Tempest. I think that's what the what that's what the team has right now. And RRR, maybe they can learn something today after a really, really dominant game yesterday. I think they're still very lost right now. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a hard week for RRR. Back-to-back face-off MV Black mm -hmm. and then L5. Not going to be a good scenario. You you made it to the top of the open division. You go through the Crucible promotions. You fail there. You don't even make it into the pro scene. Get a second opportunity because of GG's disbanding. Come into this league as the severe underdogs. And this week is the hardest. You face Black. That's right. You face L5 the next day. It's going to be a struggle, but I think we can see the improvement through the draft. I don't know if we necessarily will, but that's, like you said, kind of the one thing to focus on here if you're an RRR fan is to see what are they going to bring to the table. Um, will they get outdrafted again? The Leeming removal, they're so f unfortunate for them. They stuck at the Tychus pick, 
and the draft was one-sided, and they just couldn't make it work, and the game snowballed very quickly away from them. And at some moments, because the entire, the objective was not respawn, all the camps were taken by L5, there was just anything RR could do at all. They just had to 